and welcome to Viewpoint on Ukraine Today. My name is Sam Keely and right now I'm joined by Alia Shranda, the managing editor of Euromaidan Press, a media outlet founded in Ukraine's Revolution of Dignity. Alia, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So we are soon to approach the National Volunteers Day. Now, as I understand, Euromaidan Press was founded and is still predominantly run by volunteers. Could you tell us how that works? Um, yes, um, you're, uh, that's right. It is predominantly run by volunteers that all want to contribute to Ukraine having a voice in the international sphere. And um, they do this by translating articles, writing articles, and basically telling about Ukraine in a way to engage foreign audiences. Because uh, most of our volunteers either live abroad or have lived abroad or have friends that live abroad. And they can tell about Ukraine in a way to get people interested and to um, get them to care. So it's an English language media outlet? It's an English language media mm -hmm. outlet, but we also have a German team. So um, we have a Facebook page in English and in German and uh, also a site in English and German. And as you said, you've got people living all over the world which are contributing. Yes. Okay. So how do you measure your, your impact and your influence? Uh, well, citations by other outlets is, uh, is a very easy measure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically, our materials get cited by different outlets, uh, Foreign Policy, uh, Atlantic Council, Kiev Post, et cetera, et cetera. So when an article gets, gets cited, we know that journalists, other, other journalists are using it. But mm -hmm. apart from that, uh, we measure the views on our site and the comments. And um, especially heartening are comments from our readers that say, thank you for keeping me informed because otherwise I would have stopped caring about Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So how would you say your impact has grown over the last, it's been around 18 months, your own Maidan mm -hmm. Press is around 18 months old. Mm -hmm. So how would you say your, your impact has altered over that 18 month period? Well, I would say that the world's interest in Ukraine sparks um, around conflict. Mm -hmm. So at the bloodiest days of Euromaidan, the world was watching Ukraine um, during uh, violence in Donbass, the world was watching Ukraine. And unfortunately, like with other outlets about Ukraine, the attention is dwindling in times of relative peace. Mm -hmm. But we think that uh, here is a very important story that needs to be told about the transformation of our country, about the volunteers that are changing it. So uh, we, still, we still have uh, quite a lot of readers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what do you do on a daily basis to try and bring attention to Ukraine? So you talk about the bloody days, like on the 20th of February 2014, mm -hmm. and since some very bloody days in East Ukraine last year. Mm -hmm. But there has been relatively quiet periods, thankfully, but there is still an awful lot going on, which many Western media outlets do not touch. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you try and attract attention to that? Well, um, we focus on things that haven't been covered by other outlets. We focus on analysis because we do have good analysts in Ukraine and things that we would like to have translated and things that we would like the world to hear. Um, we we'll also focus on topics that Russian disinformation utilizes to skew the image of Ukraine. We focus a lot on historical myths such as the Holodomor. We have a whole series on the Holodomor and um, it's and historical documents, mm -hmm. Holodomor. Um, we also um, we focus on 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 Russian disinformation techniques also. So and uh, Ukrainian culture. Basically, it's things that we want to tell the world about Ukraine. Things that we think are, are important. And from yeah. from the statistics that you see, what do you what do you see as being the most interesting for people overseas to read about Ukraine? Well. Um, the most interesting is actually um, uh, Russia's actions in Ukraine. So mm -hmm. things that cover international topics. Um, we try to find bridges to other cultures. Um, and of, of course, it's interesting for a person in another country to see some, uh, read something that's related to his country. Um, for Poles, it's interesting to read about historical topics mm -hmm. and the Polish-Ukrainian connections. And we uh, try to select materials to further the, the dialogue about um, the uh, UPA uh, controversy and um, basically to foster dialogue over our platform. And that's very interesting for Poles to read. Um, for people from, for, from France, it's interesting to read about mistrals and uh, things that yeah, connect okay. Ukraine with France. Mm -hmm. So finding these connections is also a challenge. Okay, so things which link Ukraine to their home nation. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, finding connections. And um, basically uh, cross-cutting topics, um, finding ways to, yes, finding ways how what's happening in Ukraine links in, into world processes. Mm -hmm. And um, that's all. 
That's okay. always interesting. So if we touch on the, the volunteer movement as a whole in Ukraine, we've seen this over the last two years, starting in Euromaidan, grow tremendously through, through Maidan, and then the conflict in the east of the country, the amount of people helping uh, the, the country off their, their own backs has been tremendous. Um, what can you say about the volunteer movement as a whole? Where would Ukraine be if it was not for this? Uh, where would Ukraine be? <clears throat> Well, it definitely would not be moving towards democracy because this demand for democracy is a voice of the people and it is the volunteers that are moving Ukraine forward. Um, so, um, basically, well, as Timothy Snyder noted, um, the extensive volunteer movement in Ukraine is a result of a weak uh, government, okay. weak government institution. So where the government cannot handle it, the volunteers step in. And basically that's how we operate it. That was the reason for your Maidan Press being founded, because uh, there was nobody else to do the job to tell about the protests and to tell about the, our, the Ukrainian struggle for democracy. Um, so little step by step and little by little volunteers are changing this country and this country will become what Ukrainians dream for it to become because of the volunteers. A democratic nation that's been uh, really pushed by the volunteers in the country. Yes, yes. There's no other way to do it because changing Ukraine requires a myriad of changes in all spheres of life and nobody can change it but Ukrainians themselves and it, it's a long process but we see that there's no turning back and Ukraine is moving there and because of the efforts of these people that care for their country, that want their children to live in a better country. So after you've been working as a volunteer for more than a year, how, how do you feel? Are you getting tired? Um, I think, hmm, well, um, Your Mind on Press has um, got its first funding, so we're professionalizing and um, ours is the case of a volunteer movement, movement becoming a regular institution. Um, uh, we're registered as an NGO. Um, so that helps a little bit, but of course volunteers get tired. It's, um, it's a problem of all volunteer movements, mm -hmm. that people burn out because they put so much energy into the things that they care about. So it's very important that volunteers get, feel that their work is contributing and um, that, um, that they get rewarded somehow, which is why the Euromaidan SOS awards are very important. It's really great that... So you said you're now, you're now registered as a, a non-governmental organization. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, what are the plans for the future of Euromaidan Press? Mm -hmm. um, well, basically, it's to continue doing what we're doing. It's uh, independent journalism that focuses on the civic aspects, that focuses on uh, societal transformations in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also uh, popularizing uh, how Russian propaganda works to make people more aware of, of um, its impact on the world. Mm -hmm. um, and um, oh, also we have a project to connect Ukrainian activists around the world. Uh, it's called Friends of Ukraine Network. So uh, there we're making um, a newsletter, weekly newsletter of, of things that are happening around the world to help Ukraine. And, um, so this could be fundraisers in San Francisco or it could be something happening in Toronto uh, yes, or whatever it's, it may be. Yes, it's, um, it's culture fairs and fundraisers and protests and, and, um, and boycotts and things like that. And for instance, right now, um, what we have is a French Atlas LaRousse that published a map of Ukraine without Crimea. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Oxford University Press also did the same. They published a textbook of uh, Ukraine where Crimea was pictured as part of Russia. Of Russia well, we yes, think this yeah. is mm -hmm. this is really outrageous, and this needs to be changed. So right now, one of the things that volunteers all around the world can do is participate in a flash mob, um, tweeting to LaRousse pictures of Crimea's Ukraine. And do so you this see this being just, widely supported? Um, yes, yes, mm -hmm. it is being supported. So people are sending in pictures from all around the world and uh, we're going to be pushing and showing LaRousse that it's actually a global recognition mm -hmm. of, of uh, Crimea being illegally annexed by Russia. I mean, of course, it's not recognized by, by the majority of nations in the world. So, so why would you say they've published the book with such a map? Um, we don't know yet. LaRousse has not been commenting um, about the situation, unfortunately, uh, as opposed to Oxford University Press that listen to their um, readers', um, readers comments right away. Mm -hmm. So 
they they have been very closed about it, and we have not been able to. So in a what happened with Oxford, Oxford University Press? Were they willing to change this? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, with Oxford University Press, there was a public campaign um, that we took part in. Um, uh, that involved a Twitter storm, Crimea is Ukraine, and people writing the, um, the publishing house, after which they met with representatives of the Ukrainian embassy, and, and basically the process got started for... And, um, and that achieved the change that you, that you set out to, to achieve? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So r right now what Oxford University Press promised is to uh, change the textbook and, um, and the issue, issues that, have been already, um, that, that are already being sold. Um, people who bought it, they can exchange, um, exchange uh, for a free copy with a correct map. It's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Ali, that, that is all we have time for. Uh, thank you very much. It was a very interesting conversation. Thank you thank for your you. time. You have been watching Viewpoint on Ukraine today, where we have been joined by Alia Shranda, the managing editor of the Euromaidan Press. Thank you for watching.